Hey, that's, you've seen it now. You get these TV. off the ground, you're, you're worth 50%, I'll tell you. We need a bit of magic on this show, I think. Now, you can forget Paul Daniels, because in the world of illusion, Siegfried and Roy are the undisputed maestros. Their names mean nothing to people in this country, but in Germany, the household names, and in America, they've established a reputation as two of the greatest and most wealthy entertainers in the world. We caught up with them in their show in Las Vegas. <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of America. A neon oasis where crowds of gold diggers flock to test their luck in the casinos and then to spend their winnings on a glitzy show. Well, Frank Sinatra and Liza Minnelli are no longer the main attractions on the strip because the biggest stars that outsell them all are Siegfried and Roy. We are entertainers, first. We are uh, wonder workers, we are illusionists, uh, fantasists. What we do with this show is actually we stimulate the fantasy of the audience. Because without fantasy, there is nothing. An award-winning team of creative staff from Broadway and the West End were recruited to produce a set, costumes, lighting and choreography, making it the most expensive production ever staged, at a cost of more than $25 million. In fact, Siegfried and Roy's $55 million contract makes them two of the world's richest entertainers. We felt that Vegas was ready for a change. So we decided to make it a theatrical experience, to go a new dimension, to be, you may want to say, pioneering in a new era. Siegfried and Roy came to Vegas from Germany 25 years ago with their pet cheetah and a box of tricks. The two magicians and their growing menagerie of exotic animals were quick to build a reputation as the best night out in Vegas. The people of Las Vegas have been very grand. They accepted us for our ideas and for our beliefs, and they gave us all the help we could. And of course, in America, it is. They give you a chance, but you have to keep your promise. Products of the American dream, Siegfried and Roy have become part of America's own aristocracy, courting the friendship of some of the biggest names in show business. After the shows, we get celebrities, we get stars or, or from the theater, from you know, name it, they come here. We have a friendship with most of them since decades. It's not only the sheer spectacle that draws in the crowds, it's also illusions like this. Ooh, she looks a bit compressed. Their methods are such a well-guarded secret that we weren't allowed to film some of their illusions in full, like the human turning into a tiger and the disappearing elephant. Not just content to astound their audiences with their magic, the German duo have other ambitions. Our main goal in life is, and our mere essence of being here is, to make people happy. Siegfried and I have, since 30 years, uh, tried to make everything a better place if we can. Today, unfortunately, you open the papers, there's war going on, there's the crime, there's a, there are too many things where you're constantly pressured of, oh, it really isn't good to live. Life is wonderful, life is beautiful. Look for the magic what is around you, in nature, plants, flowers, and all the animals where we share this planet with. Look for it and let it enlighten your heart and your life. So what is the secret of the partnership's 30-year success? Roy is more the illusionist. His dreams sometimes are so big, you know, and I have to take oh, him down a little bit. Maybe I'm too realistic, and, and I'm a little bit down here, so I have to go. He lifts me up, I bring him down, we meet in the middle, and it works out that way. Well, I like to dream in colors. And being entertainers, being magicians, we have big dreams. And uh, this will be our message for every and anybody. Don't stop dreaming, because this is what keeps us all alive. And they've been saving the white tiger so that they can squash it up into a little box for one of their magic tricks. 
A bit mean. Did, did you ever fancy making it in Vegas yourself as a comedian? Making what? <laughs> <laughs> making it, the big time. Making what or making who? Showbiz. You, well, they say they're very... Did you heard that, didn't you? They're their own mouths. They're, they're, they're good hypers of themselves, aren't they? Not exactly what you might call shy, are they? <laughs> in fact, one of them was... The, the blonde on this side was going... Just like doing to be or not to be, it was all the hands up there. I think that the, the, the thing that I, I noticed, or the, what I heard, was the word wealthy. Do you notice that? <laughs> we are the richest of the... Oh, yes. How do you go about this, then? Oh. But um, I've never wanted to be an illusionist in that way. Mm. Well, just because they're too lazy to learn a comic song, <laughs> it's silly, really. Learn a few gags, isn't it? I bet, I bet you're worth well, they're it. They're all going to learn to say, oh, no, shut your face. That's all they're going to learn to say. <laughs> You must be worth a few bob nowadays. Oh, what? Me? <laughs> Dreams? You wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe how much I owe. We'll, dis you, we'll, we'll, dis we'll discuss your financial situation in a bit. Will you? Yeah, I was sort of kenned on about it before. We do need some magic in the show now, and the person to provide it is over there, Amanda. Now, not all magic is as spectacular as Siegfried and Roy, who you saw earlier. Now, with me is the great Tsar, who's about to perform a trick that some of you might think is quite horrific. So don't try it at home now. So what exactly are you going to be doing for us? Well, I shall attempt to swallow these razor blades, after which, perhaps even more impressively, I shall swallow a length of cotton. Oh, then, tying them together in my stomach, I shall draw them up through my throat, back into the outside world. So how do I know that these are real razor blades? Well, if you'd like to take hold of that piece of paper, I shall show you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, piece of paper. Yes, well, that looks like a real razor blade. Anyway, so, ladies and gentlemen, the great czar. So much, I bought the company. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I messed around with razor blades, it's that time of the week uh, once again with cast a critical eye.